app settings is a great place to store configuration. It allows you to change values for your application without recompiling or redeploying your application. But how do you get access to those settings during setup before you have dependency injection in place? In this 10 minute training video, I'm gonna show you how to access configuration data in program.cs before setting up dependency injection. Now, for most of my training, I work to give you an in-depth perspective on technology, but sometimes you just need to get the quick answer to the question, how do I use this? That's why I created the 10 minute training series. So let's dive right into the code. And here I have a Blazor application. Now I've made as simple as possible. I have turned off all interactivity, which means only one project. And yes, there is the sample information, but we don't even need to worry about that because all we're gonna concentrate on today is program.cs. Now, if we wanna have access to configuration data, let's say in our pages, like the home page, that's not a problem. We could just ask for um, inject I configuration and call it config. And then we can access the configuration that way. That uses dependency injection and that's set up back in program.cs. So that happens, the, the dependency injection is configured and all the rest right here. But what if you wanna have access to the depends, the configuration maybe right here, which is actually something that happens quite often. And the reason why is maybe you are setting up something like a um, HTTP client. So you say builder.services to add HTTP client into your dependency injection. And you say add HTTP client. Now, if you just do that, you're good. And that's a generic HTTP client, but maybe you want a named client with a base address. So you say, this is going to be my local, um, local API. Okay. And I say, now let's set up the, the configuration for this with the client dot base address. And I say equals new URI and I put HTTPS local host, uh, 7654. Well, that's, that's great. You, you set up your HTTP client, but what if that is going to change over time? So what if you, right now your local host is this, but your local API might change to be now a development machine or something else. Well, you now have to change source code and recompile your application in order to have access to this new location, which isn't ideal. So ideally you'd put this in your app settings somewhere, but how do you put this in app settings? Well, it's actually quite easy. And so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna put it first in app settings and we're not gonna worry about having like, you know, your secrets.json or other things because it just works the same way. Um, so we're just gonna put in app settings for now. And we're gonna say local API. Again, we're not gonna put, you know, different layers and things like that in there. We could, um, but we're just gonna leave it at the root. And we're gonna say that HTTP, HTTPS and let's, call this local API from config. Okay, so just in order to see that, yes, it's coming from the configuration, that's it. All right, so there's our configuration, it's called local API. So over here, in order to see it well, let's come up here to, we're right after builder, we're gonna say string and call this base address, or let's be more specific here, local, API address, base address equals builder dot configuration dot get value of type string and we'll say local API. And let's just unpin this for now so you can see the whole thing. And that gives us our local base address. Now, right now it's saying, hey, can we null here? Let's not worry about that yet. We'll get there, but let's cut this out and we'll say local API base address. And again, don't worry about the nullable string yet. Okay, so let's just put a breakpoint right here after this string is pulled from our configuration, just to see that it works. Okay, we don't even need to see the web page. If we mouse over this, or if we look down here in our autos, either way, 
we can see that we have the local base address or local API base address is local API dot from config. So it's pulling from the right location, which means now that we will set us up from the correct location as well, because of the fact that we are um, pulling from the configuration, which means it can change every time we load it up and it's okay, it'll pull the new value. So that's all it takes in order to access your configuration. Just say builder.configuration.get value and ask for the value in your configuration. Now to clean this up a little bit because we do these green squigglies, let's go ahead and say on a new line, we'll say or, because right now we have a value coming from configuration, but it might not be there. We can say HTTPS uh, localhost 7654, like the default value for that, which now takes care of this whole thing. We can even come back up here to our app settings and decide, you know what, we want to um, actually let's cut this whole thing out here. And now we can run this. And when we do, we come up here and we look down at our local base address. It says localhost 7654 because of the fact that we are in fact um, pulling that default value. But if we come back over here to app settings and paste that back in, we run this again, it pulls from local API dot from config. So this allows us to pull configuration from our app settings or again, user secrets or environmental variables or key vault or whatever, but during configuration. And before you get to line 15, where we say builder.build. And that allows you to set up things like dependency injection to have values that came from configuration on setup. You can also say, hey, I want my logger to have certain logging information on setup. And you know, maybe even talk to certain APIs, whatever it is, you can do these setup things by pulling from configuration instead of hard coding strings into your application that are then gonna cause you to recompile as those values change. Okay, so really simple, really quick thing to do, just builder.configuration.get value in before you get to the builder.build line on line 15. All right, thanks for watching. And as always, I am Tim Corey.